Hey guys, welcome back. This is uh, part two of a series that we're doing on a walkthrough and tutorial process of setup and deployment for Power BI tools with Matthias. Uh, if this is the first video you're watching, uh, please go ahead and check out part one as that walks through the initial setup of Power BI tools before, which is the focus of this video, which will be the connection and integration with Azure DevOps. So go ahead and check that out first, either over in the playlist to the right or in the description down below. But otherwise, Matthias, I'll hand it over to you. Fantastic, and um, welcome back, everyone. Um, let's look at Azure DevOps this time. Um, uh, you've seen part one, um, so I'm just going to remind you, this is where we left things. We had a, a Git-enabled local repository uh, where we've got our PBI tools deployment manifest, which we already tested. Um, I'm now going to set up a, a fresh repo in Azure DevOps. And uh, that one will also be available as a public repo for reference um, after uh, after the recording. So I've got um, the an existing organization here, uh, uh, PPI Tools, um, and uh, I've got a samples project which is public. Uh, I'm going to create a new repository inside the samples project. Uh, just going to say new repository, and I'm going to call this uh, tutorial um, DevOps reports. I don't need to add a readme here. I just want a blank repository, create, and uh, I've got uh, a Git URL, which I'm going to copy so that I can connect to it from my local workstation. So just going back here, um, I'm going to say git remote at Azure DevOps, um, and then paste the URL. And um, that allows me to actually publish the three files we've created already and get it pushed straight into Azure, um, just giving VS Code a few seconds. There we go. If I now go back and refresh, here we go. So now we've got those files in a Azure DevOps repo. And um, let's um, set up a deployment pipeline in here. Similar to uh, GitHub Actions, Azure DevOps uses uh, a YAML file uh, to define the logic. In fact, um, there is um, uh, there are lots of similarities between the two. Um, so let me copy what I've got prepared. Let me go in here and create a file and call that um, Azure Pipelines. Not YAML. Once again, this is all going to be available to you because those um, repositories are public. Um, so let's have a quick look what we're doing here. First of all, there's a, a trigger in place, which means every time something gets pushed to the main branch, this particular pipeline will be triggered automatically. Mm -hmm. I've got a few variables set up, and then I've got a deployment job uh, defined. Um, Azure DevOps actually has a dedicated notion of deployment jobs. Uh, they are identified using the deployment um, attribute here. I'm giving this an arbitrary name uh, as well as a display name. And um, this piece um, is uh, available to us um, uh, since the very latest release of uh, PBI tools. Um, which uh, gave us uh, a, a Docker container containing PBI to its core um, all pre-installed. Um, so with that in place, um, uh, this particular pipeline is very easy to set up because all I need to do is to actually reference uh, this uh, GitHub hosted uh, PBI tools container. Um, it's running on Ubuntu and um, uh, the only other thing that happens here is I'm checking out my source code so that it's available to PBI tools. Um, I have to explicitly enable LFS support. Uh, remember our initial setup, um, we used LFS because we're actually pushing binary PBIX files rather than source code. Um, and um, then we've got a script step, which effectively just 
um, invokes PPI to its core using the deploy um, action with a local folder reference, with a profile and an environment reference, which are both coming from those variables. Um, because we need access to our um, uh, uh, service principle secret, um, and because we can't make uh, the uh, secret uh, itself um, uh, available in this uh, file, um, we need to set it up as a, a variable um, inside Azure DevOps. Uh, and we're, we're going to see what that looks like um, in a bit. Um, and um, because it's a secret, Azure uh, DevOps requires that we're explicitly referencing it uh, using this particular syntax. Uh, otherwise, even if the secret had been defined, it still wouldn't um, be made available um, to this particular um, invocation. Um, so this is what we need um, in terms of defining the pipeline itself. And um, uh, I can basically go here and say, um, edit pipeline YAML, and I can commit this and um, push it up into Azure DevOps because that's what we're going to have to do two or three more steps in terms of um, getting everything set up. Uh, unlike uh, GitHub, uh, in Azure, this is not going to be picked up automatically as a new pipeline. Um, Azure DevOps requires a lot more sort of explicit uh, setup steps. Um, so if I refresh here, we're going to see we've got this additional file now. And um, uh, I need to go into pipelines. And I need to create a new pipeline. Um, I need to specify where my pipeline is defined. In this case, uh, it's uh, an Azure DevOps repo, uh, and uh, specifically this one, which I only just created. And uh, because I used the standard file name, it basically identified this automatically. So that makes it super easy for me. Um, and um, that's pretty much what's needed in, in order to set up the pipeline. However, I still need to put my secret in place. That's very convenient, however, because I've got this variables button here. So I can go in there. I can say new variable. Um, and I can say PPI um, client secret, making sure um, I don't have a typo here or just get it from what's been remembered. Um, I need to mark this as a secret um, explicitly. And then I need to paste my password in as a value. OK, there we go. So I've got that. Um, and unlike in GitHub, it's actually never um, uh, exposed uh, the, the value itself uh, during the setup. Um, so here we go. We've got that. Um, I um, could click Run, but that's actually going to fail. As I said before, unfortunately, Azure DevOps uh, requires quite a few explicit setup steps, um, one of them being uh, the deployment environment. So we can see here I referenced an environment um, to deploy into. Uh, and this one is actually called prod. Um, and um, I need to ensure that uh, this particular um, environment is actually defined. Uh, and um, because I've actually run other projects uh, on that same project, I already have a prod environment in place. Um, if I had started completely from scratch, I would have had to go in here and basically say new environment uh, and put prod in here uh, because my pipeline would fail otherwise. So that means I can now go here and um, uh, did I? I didn't click save, did I? Um, so let's just do this again uh, very quickly. There we go. Uh, sorry, that was uh, silly. It, it's just, it's not as convenient as uh, as uh, GitHub is, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, uh, so here we go. Let's do this uh, quickly. Once again, copy um, value. OK, save. 
And um, yes, so th this is basically what I missed earlier. So you can either save it um, or you can basically run it uh, immediately. Let me let me do save. Um, and um, if I now go back into pipeline mode and click on all, I can see there's one showing here which hasn't had any runs yet. If I go on that and say run pipeline, and run, um, it is uh, going to give me this particular message. Uh, so again, uh, lots of explicit uh, steps needed here. So this one basically says uh, the, the pipeline is configured to go into the prod environment. I need to give it explicit permissions to actually um, deploy into that environment. So if I click on view here, it says permission needed for port environment. If I say permit and confirm, then we're good. Now everything is set up and uh, the job is now kicking off. And um, uh, we just have to wait a few seconds. Uh, we can now see it uh, in action, the containers being downloaded. Um, and now PPI Tools Deploy is running. That's, con uh, that's uh, complete and successful. And we're seeing lots and lots of green tick marks, um, which basically shows uh, we're good. Uh, this is all completed. If I click on this particular pipeline, I then get to see a, a complete um, run history. Um, if I go to my environment and click on prod, I can also see um, what the history was on this particular environment. And we can see the pipeline we just ran uh, came from this particular repo. So that's the one um, uh, we had in place. and. Um, uh, just as a final step, uh, if I make a minor change here, so if I change the background color for the canvas, make it blue, and then save this. Um, I need to do save as here because um, I'm still pointing to my GitHub folder. I need to go in here. So save, replace, there we go. I now have a change in my repo. It detected that my PBX file has changed. Um, so I can say um, changed um, background color commit and sync into Azure. And that will demonstrate that this automatic trigger is working because obviously I just triggered a manual pipeline run. I wanted okay. to make sure that you can see that the branch-based trigger is also working. So if I go back here and I go to pipelines, I can actually see one pipeline is now running um, because it got triggered automatically. I can mm -hmm. click here and I can see live uh, the various steps which are happening. Uh, it should just take a few seconds yet again. And uh, uh, there we go. Sometimes it doesn't even update automatically. So this is already completed, 15 seconds. And we can go back to Power BI, uh, refresh the report uh, to see our blue background color, just to prove that it's actually working end to end. So that concludes. Um, our uh, tutorial for Azure DevOps. Uh, a few more setup steps necessary, um, but overall, um, it's all just needed once. And from now on, uh, the deployments happen fully automated. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, this has been great. And I think, uh, again, between either uh, for the people attending this one or uh, the, the GitHub uh, configuration, then we've uh, now been able to cover an end to end process of. Uh, really configuring and setting up, and then to, you know, getting all the the content and artifacts deployed uh, using the the Power BI tools um, add-on. So this is great. Thank you. Fantastic.
um, yeah, so hope that was helpful. Thanks, Reed, for, for having me again and uh, for hosting this. Um, follow me on Twitter, um, follow the project on GitHub, um, and raise issues if, if there's anything uh, you want as a new feature or if you run into any problems. Absolutely. And all the description uh, links below will be down in the description, um, down below the video, to, to contact Matthias, uh, either for feedback, suggestions, or comments as well. So uh, like you said, feel, uh, please feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Plus, if you have any comments for a future video, go ahead and add that to the comment section down below. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member.